So thank you, thank you so much, um, Professor Tran. Um, my name is Maiko Ichihara, Associate Professor on, of International Relations at Hitotsubashi University, Japan, and a visiting scholar at Carnegie Endowment for International Peace in the United States currently. Um, my field of research is democracy support in Japan's um, foreign policy and um, not security. And so I would like to focus on the aspect of democracy support. My presentation looks at Japan's approach to the free and open Indo-Pacific vision or FOIP and analyzes the way Japan shifted to the diplomatic approach centered around FOIP. I argue that liberal values began functioning to lead Japan to take more proactive diplomatic initiatives after the end of the Cold War. And with trials and errors of values diplomacy, Japan has shifted to an incremental and pluralistic approach over time. Japan's foreign policy remained um, low key during the Cold War and in the first decade of the post-Cold War era. However, it was forced to upgrade due to the change in the international power structure in the 2000s. With the relative decline of the US power and the rise of China, the unipolar characteristic of the post-Cold War international order was weakened. In East Asia, Japan was surpassed by China in terms of both military expenditure and GDP in 2007 and 10, respectively. And this power shift in the region prompted Japan to seek ways to differentiate its own diplomacy from that of China in order to maintain its external influence. It was in this process that values such as democracy, human rights, and the rule of law have been brought to the forefront of Jap Japanese diplomacy as universal values since the mid 2000s. Whereas Japan established strategic mutual relations with China in October 2006, due to the importance of maintaining good relations with the country, Values diplomacy was placed at the core of diplomatic initiatives starting in November of that year. The awareness about the necessity of proactive diplomacy to support the liberal international order was behind this move as well. This approach was expressed as a commitment to support the st stability and prosperity of countries that share these values to create an arc of freedom and prosperity in the wider Asian region, enjoying strengthened ties with other democracies, such as the United States, India, and Australia. Then Foreign Minister Taro Aso positioned this values diplomacy as the fourth pillar of Japanese diplomacy. However, this initiative was perceived to represent a containment strategy, creating an arc surrounding China and suspicion were, suspicions were raised by China. Criticism arose domestically and even from the United States with US Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice warning that this initiative could send an unintended signal to China. The initiative was a bit premature diplomatically and thus disappeared from the diplomatic scene after the administrations of um, Abe in 2006 to seven and ASO in 2008 to nine. When values diplomacy returned to the forefront of Japanese diplomacy with the inauguration of the second Abe administration in December, 2012, Abe asserted that values diplomacy is strategic diplomacy. The national security strategy of 2013 stated one of the objectives of Japan's diplomacy as to improve the global security environment and build a peaceful, stable, and prosperous international community by strengthening the international order based on universal values and rules and by playing a leading role in the settlement of disputes through consistent diplomatic efforts and further personnel contributions. For this purpose, the strategy aims to strengthen cooperation with countries that share universal values and to support democracy in developing countries with ODA. In 2017, Japan launched the Free and Open Indo-Pacific or FOIP initiative 
based on Abe's keynote speech at the Tokyo International Conference on African Development, uh, or TICAD, held in Kenya in 2016. So FOIP is often misunderstood as a US conception, but it is not. It's a Japanese conception. While free and open are terms closely um, related to democracy, Japan underscores the values of rule of law, free, freedom of navigation, and free trade rather than democracy per se. And in ODA provisions we, within the FOIP scheme, the country emphasizes openness, transparency, economic efficiency, and financial health of the target countries. It focuses on norms of good governance instead of democracy itself. And thus it is a restrained approach uh, for the promotion of liberal values. But it is a slightly more proactive approach than mere assistance for approach uh, for effective governance. In so doing, Japan intends to avoid giving the impression that FOIP is a containment strategy against China. And in a sense, this message is directed to Southeast Asian countries more than to China itself. Having strong economic ties with both China and Japan, Southeast Asian countries hope to maintain good relations with both regional giants. When Japan was emphasizing democracy and human rights, these countries felt they were forced to choose between Japan and China. In order not to lose Southeast Asian countries to China, Japan intentionally weakened its emphasis on democracy. Thus, FOIP is Japan's reassurance policy, especially toward Southeast Asian countries. However, compared to the rhetorical emphasis on liberal values, Japan's approach is weak in contents. Its values-oriented diplomacy could crumble without substance, and Japan, Japanese policymakers should do more to ensure that the mismatch between rhetoric and action does not end up undermining Japan's diplomatic efforts. First and foremost, Japan's emphasis on stability could reinforce the status quo in recipient, recipient countries with possible unintentional result of buttressing authoritarian governments and violating liberal values. Japan's stability-focused and state-focused uh, state approach should be balanced with a more proactive approach to promote freedom. To this end, Japan's grant assistance for grassroots projects which is the program that supports Japanese and local civil society organizations should be broadened to include organizations in political issue areas. This will help promote greater transparency of governance, which is one of the targets in the FOIP strategy. Second, there is still an outdated belief in the modernization theory among Japanese policymakers. Arguing that economic development bring, uh, brings democratization the theory made the acceptance of liberal values and the lack of promotion of such values to other countries seem compatible. The expansion of democracy in the third wave of democratization from the mid 1970s to um, the mid 2000s seemed to prove that the human rights situation would improve sooner or later without the interference of other countries. However, the situation over the past 15 years has shown that the paradigm has completely reversed. At the outset of the Biden administration, the United States sought to stop using the FOIP concept. It considered the concept to have been developed by the Trump administration and wanted to differentiate itself from the Trump administration. In response, Japanese officials explained that FOIP is a concept developed by Japan and persu persuaded them not to abandon it, as they believed that discontinuing the use of the FOIP concept would risk sending a false signal that the United States would stop supporting the liberal international order. The Japanese government succeeded in this pers uh, persuasion and FOIP is still in use today. And today it is desirable to continue to promote FOIP and to stop policies that may, uh, that may support authoritarianism. And above all, it will be important for the international community to make China a responsible great power in the future. Thank you very much.